All right, guys, let's look at question five of the November 2022 paper. And question five reads as follows. It says the graph of g of x equals 2x plus 6 and the inverse of g are shown in the diagram below. D and b are the x and y intercepts respectively of g. C is the x intercept of the inverse. The graph of G and its inverse intersect at A. Okay, cool. Now, we are asked to write down the Y coordinate of B. Write down the Y coordinate of B. What is the Y coordinate? Well, from the equation of the straight line, if it's written in the form Y is MX plus C, we know that C is the Y intercept of the graph. This is where the graph cuts the Y axis. So the equation of the line was given to us as 2x plus 6, the g graph, which is now going to help us figure out what the coordinates of b are going to be, which I'm going to obviously put in the drawing. And I think you'll agree with me that by looking at the equation, 2x plus 6, we're going to have 0 as the x coordinate and the y coordinate is going to be 6. That's why they are just saying write it down. We're just writing it down. There's no thinking involved there. So b is uh, 0 as well as 6. Follow-up question says we need to determine the equation of the inverse in the form inverse of x equal, uh, inverse of g of x equals mx plus n. Okay, what is the algorithm for working out inverses? So the original equation was given to us as 2x plus 6. So you just have to interchange the x and the y. Where you see y, you replace it with x. Where you see x, you replace it with y. But everything else stays exactly as it has been. Then I'm going to take away 6 on both sides. I'm going to end up with just x take away 6 is equal to 2y. And if I divide both sides by 2, my y comes out as a half of x because 1 divided by 2 is a half. And 6 divided by 2 gives me 3. So that implies that the inverse function will have the equation inverse of g of x equals a half of x minus 3. All right, moving to the next question which is a very interesting one. They're saying to us here, we need to determine the coordinates of A. So what is A and what is happening at A? Well, at A, the graphs are equal. You'll notice that these graphs are equal to each other. They're actually intersecting here. But not only are they equal, they're also equal to the line of symmetry. And the axis of symmetry, for those who might not know, is the line that passes through the origin. It's given by the equation Y is equal to X. So these three graphs are equal. And at the point of intersection, you can equate this line with that line and solve simultaneously, or any one of them with the green line. Okay, I'm spoiled for choice here. can pick any two. Just know that, that the line of symmetry is going to be equal to any one of them. You can equate both of them, solve simultaneously, or equate one of them with the green line. You're still going to get the correct solution. All right, so I've, I think the line y equals to x looks very really nice. I'm going to use it. So what am I saying to you? I'm saying g at a is equal to the inverse at A is equal to uh, the line Y equals to X. Okay, is equal to Y is equal to X. So they are all equal. Now I'm going to pick this here and equate it to that. They are equal, everything is equal at the point of intersection. So the equation of G was given to us as 2X plus 6. I'm going to equate that to X. You could have equated the two graphs if you liked. And then I'm certainly getting here that uh, x is equal to negative 6, because if I subtract 6 on both sides, I'm going to have negative 6. And if I subtract x on both sides, I'm going to get 1x. So I'm ending up with just x equals to negative 6. And since, I, like I said, y is equal to x, at that point they are both equal, that implies that y is also going to be equal to negative 6. But you can sub it in any of the three equations. You are going to end up with the same answer. So all I did is just take that and equate it to x, because they are all equal at the point of intersection. Now we need to calculate the length of the line AB. Okay, let's go and find what the coordinates of A are. We know, we just found that the coordinates of A are negative 6 as well as negative 6. And we know that the coordinates of B are not in positive 6. So this is asking for a distance. There's no trick here. We're going to use the distance formula. We know how to use the distance formula. It's given by the square root of the difference in the axis. Subtract the difference in the y. So x of b, take away uh, x of a squared, add that with y of b, take away y of a squared. So that's the square root of x of b is not, take away a negative is equivalent to adding 6, 
and then y of b is 6, take away a negative is equal to adding uh, a 6, and we need the square of this, and I promise you, if you try and figure out what the answer to this is going to be, it's just 6 squared plus 12 squared, 6 squared is 36, 12 squared is 144, when you add 6, 36 and 144, you're going to get 180 under the square root, and if I express this in third form, it implies that we can claim that AB, okay, let's get AB to be written correctly. You can call it BA if you like, but I'm just going to call it AB. So clearly AB is going to be in third form 6 root 5, okay? They did not specify if we should leave it in third form or convert it to two decimal pieces or anything along those lines. So I'm just going to leave it as just 6 root 5. It's important for you to make sure you don't make mistakes with signs because when you're adding 6 squared with 12 squared, you're always going to get 180. And after that, remember, we're looking for the square root of that. And that's where 6 root 5 is coming from. Okay. All right. Now, the last question is asking us to calculate the area of triangle ABC. So let's go and see what this area is. So triangle ABC, let's go and look at what, at, at what triangle ABC is. So we know A has coordinates negative 6 with negative 6. Okay. Everything is equal at that point of contact. Um, if you asked me, I can work out what the coordinates of C are, and I can also, can also work out the coordinates of what D is. So this distance here, we're looking at this distance here, BC, might assist us to try and figure out what the area of this triangle is going to be, okay? There's many ways of working out this area that you're looking for. But the one the area of the triangle we're looking at, so I'm going to label the whole thing in yellow, right? We're looking for the area of this yellow region here. We want to find what that area is going to be. So, so there's many ways of doing this. I'm going to approach it by using the area of half base multiplied by height. But we don't have the perpendicular height. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this into two pieces. Okay, we'll call them the green piece. Okay, I want the area of the green triangle. All right, the area of the green triangle and the blue triangle. Okay, the blue triangle is going to be this one over here. So I want to find both those two areas. If I combine them, they should give me the total area of the entire triangle. Right. Now, um, let's think about it. So I need these coordinates here because I'm going to look at uh, the green triangle this way. I'm going to look at the green triangle as a simple triangle. So I need to know how long the base is. Okay. I want to know how long the base is. So the base of this here, I need to know how long it is. So I need to know the coordinates of C and the coordinates of D for me to be able to work out what the area is going to be. Okay, so let's see. Uh, we'll work out the x-intercepts of point C, and I will work out the x-intercepts at point D. We know uh, y, is zero, y is zero at the x values there of this graph. And if I go back and I look at the given equation, 2x plus 6, that's the equation of this line, all right? So y is 2x plus 6, so 2 x plus 6, I'm looking for the x value, it's going to be 2x plus 6, I promise you we're going to get x as negative 3, so that's the coordinates of d, I want the coordinates of c, so I'm working out the x-intercept of this one here, remember the equation, we found it as half x minus 3, so if you have 0 here, and you've got a half of x minus 3, I think the x value is just going to be 6 as well, okay? It's going to be plus 6. There's a reason why 6 is the correct solution based on the ideas of what an inverse needs to behave like. So um, I think we have 6 and 0 here, but we'll talk about that some other time. I swapped these ones. I swapped these ones. Negative 3 is the x coordinate, and the y coordinate is going to be 0. So what does that mean? That means the green triangle has the following features. Let's look at it. It has the following features. Um, the green triangle. Here's the green triangle, beautiful people. The green triangle here has a base from 3 to 6. The base is 9 units. That's how long it is. From negative 3 to 6, it's going to be 9 units because it's from D all the way to C. The distance traveled is 9. What is the height of this thing here? The height okay, is from the x-axis to point B. That makes it 6 units. And the area of a triangle is half base times height. Half of 6 is 3, 3 times 9 gives me 27 units, okay? That's 27 square units, okay? Square units. That's going to be the area of the green area. Now I'm looking for the blue one. 
the blue one, also I want to use the same idea. Now, it's a basic triangle. I know for some weird reason people struggle with this, but it's not that complicated. I hope this teaches you something. This is the base of the triangle. The height does not have to be in sight. Once more, how long is the base? The base is from point D to point C. It's nine units. The height is outside of the triangle. I think it's just going to be outside. Okay, that's the height is going to be outside. It's the distance outside of the triangle. Okay, very important. So let me just put this somewhere so that you guys can see it much better. I'm going to rewrite it here again. I'll say I'm looking at the base here. Okay, this is the triangle I'm interested in. There's point D here, there's point C here, there's point A here. The base from D to C again is nine units. That's how long the base is, nine. Now the height is outside the triangle. It's okay for the height to be outside the triangle. And how long is the height? It's traveling from six on the point A to this x-axis, the distance here. This is the distance I'm looking at, perpendicular to the base. And that's going to be six units. Okay, so my height is six. So the second area is half times the base, which is nine times the height. And the height is what? Is six as well. So half of six is three times nine, we're getting 27 again. So the sum of the two will give us the total area. So 27 plus 27 will give us 54. So that's going to be the total area of the particular triangle. Okay, very important. So the area they're looking for equals to 27 plus 27. 27 for the green triangle and 27 for the blue triangle. And we're getting 54 uh, squared units. Okay, very important. All right. Uh, so that is how you will analyze uh, this, this awesome question that is based on a function and its inverse.